As the Knicks charged toward their second title in four years in 1973, they were, quite simply, the dominant franchise in the NBA. With their Game 7 victory in Boston to clinch the Eastern Conference Finals, the Knicks became the first team to win an elimination game on the Celtics' home court and set themselves up to face and defeat the Lakers for the title in five games. Well, that's the story. The New York Knicks have defeated the Los Angeles Lakers and they race off the court with the 1973 World Championship. It was the crowning achievement for a franchise that had never won a championship prior to hiring Red Holtzman as coach. In my mind, there has never been a greater team than the group that Red Holtzman put on the basketball floor. Back outside to Bradley. Good. Red Holtzman is a giant in this town. That's a New York player through and through. Holtzman, a child of Jewish immigrants from Russia and Romania, was nicknamed Reuta, the Yiddish word for red. I grew up in Brooklyn and went to Franklin K. Lane High School. A little known fact, Red Holtzman went to high school with my father in Brooklyn. They were teammates on the handball team. They won the city championship in 1937. But it was basketball where Holtzman excelled and where he decided to focus his attention. When Red Holson was growing up in the uh, 30s, basketball was Jewish sport, primarily. It was almost like a, a way of life. After high school, Holtzman went south to the University of Baltimore. But he soon determined that Charm City was no match for the Big Apple, especially in one key area. He missed his mother's uh, Jewish-Romanian cooking. He was always hungry because he couldn't eat the other food. So he came back, went to CCNY, and became an All-American basketball player. And he played under one of the legendary coaches of all time in Nat Holman. Nat Holman was the Babe Ruth of basketball at that time. That's the kind of coach that Red played under at City College. But I remember people talking about him when he played for City College. He would take the shirt right off your back and much of his early knowledge and much of his groundwork in, in his later career as a coach came from his years under Nat Holman at City College. Tough, hard nose, never give up. As was the case with so many young men of his era, Red put his life and his career on hold after college to serve his country. Red felt that it was his duty. He was an American, he was a New York guy, and uh, when the Navy called, he went. After three years of service, it was back to the court. When Red was a professional player, he played in sort of that vagabond era, or at least he started prior to the birth of the NBA or the BAA in 1946. And Red played for a terrific team called the Rochester Royals. For Rochester, he started at, at some point. He had a good uh, set shot, a two-hand set shot. He could drive. He was a tenacious uh, defensive player, and he was smart. He was more of a, a guy that was playing tough defense, a guy that was moving the ball, a guy that was uh, always putting the team first. Red was a floor general. He was the point guard. He was sort of the coach on the floor, as we call him today. So much so that he was asked to be a player coach for the Milwaukee Hawks. By the time the franchise moved to St. Louis, Holtzman's playing days were over, but his coaching career had only just begun. Following his mid-season dismissal as coach of the St. Louis Hawks, Red Holtzman was not out of work for long. It was time to go home. Red came back to New York in 57 as an assistant with the New York Knicks. He returns to the Knicks as a scout under Fuzzy Levine, who had been his running mate back in Milwaukee. Fuzzy becomes the head coach of the Knicks, and he immediately hires Red as a scout. And Red enjoyed scouting. He scouted some very fine players. He was scouting people like uh, Walt Frazier. Impossible effort by Walt Frazier. Like Phil Jackson. 
like Willis Reed. Ultimately, those people that eventually came to the Knicks. First time I ever met Red was at our old gym on Grambling campus. He had scouted all the players. Had a nice pinstripe gray suit on with a nice tan London Fog raincoat. Very cordial. <laughs> Smoking a stogie. So I liked him. He had a really good understanding of uh, the player, who he was, uh, the character of the individual, their strengths, their weaknesses. And Red loved the life of a scout. He enjoyed the road, and he enjoyed coming home even better. Because home brought him to his wife, Selma. They've been together from the time that they met as teenagers. They were married in the early 40s. Then they spent you know, all their time together. They were always happy together. They were, uh, I want to say, joined at the hip. <laughs> Red and Selma were so emblematic of that time in New York. You met the girl of your dreams very early on in your life. You got married fairly early in your life. And you stayed married forever and ever. Together, Red and Selma were a solid team. But the other team in Holtzman's life was struggling. And Knicks team president Ned Irish was considering a change. This New York ball club. You cannot make this thing. In 1967-68, the Knicks were a very highly touted team. After all those years of being a terrible team, this was finally going to be the year where they were going to come out of the wilderness. But that team does not get off to a good start. We were in dire streets. We couldn't beat anybody. 20 put on away, no good. We were discombobulated. We were not a team. Not a good shot out of his range. We had 12 different guys going 12 different directions, man. And the Knicks looked to Red Holtzman to be the man to turn the franchise around. When Ned Irish offered him the job as coach of the Knicks, he didn't want that job. I didn't want a coach. But uh, they said there's nobody else. It's you. You got the job. Jackson with five fouls, Red Holtzman is taking him out of the game. And he got selected the coach, even though he didn't want to be the coach. Mr. Irish told him, he said, well, you're the coach. He said, Mr. Irish, I don't want to be the coach. Coaches of the New York Knickerbockers, Red Holtzman. Only job I got for you is coaches. <laughs> you're the coach. <laughs> you know, so Red became the coach. He just didn't want to be prominent, didn't want his picture in the paper type person, you know? And it's kind of funny how life turns out. So Red took over, and the Knicks wound up winning 28 in the last 45 games, and they wound up uh, getting into the playoffs. He gets Bill Bradley. And again, they steal it. And Walt Frazier has 23 points. It was enough to assure both the club and Red himself that he was indeed the man for the job. Red had been involved in scouting and the drafting and the trades of all the players that he had on his team. Well, knocked away by Jackson. So, I mean, he had a little bit of better insight on their personalities. He's got it. Bill Jackson gives his second field goal. And I think that that really served him well. Jay up and Nick, left corner, it's Bradley open, 20 footer, got it. Holtzman's style was one of authority, with equal focus on professionalism and attention to detail. And you just try to do the best job you think you can do at the time, and you try to make the moves you think are proper. Sometimes they work out right, sometimes they don't. He instituted a mentality that the Knicks uniform stood for something both on and off the court. And wearing it came with a sense of responsibility, no matter what your status was on the team. Right away, he cut out all the shenanigans. The only way you're going to play is that you play the way I want you to play. Only one set of rules, his rules, his way, the highway. I think they felt that we were playing the game right for them. He established his control immediately by having something like uh, 21 days straight of practices. And I think I was able to get my point across. 
In addition to discipline, Holtzman also stressed the importance of another D. Red Holtzman believed in one thing above all others. You're talking about team defense. That was defense. Team defense. The commitment to defense. Team defense. Full court defense, pressing defense. Pressing and picking guys up. They're pressing, they're sagging. Defense from baseline to baseline. He said, we're gonna play full court defense. And see all these plays we have? It's not about these plays, it's about how well you wanna to play together. On Holtzman's Knicks, the hole was always bigger than the sum of its parts. All 12 guys on the team were equally important. They just embraced the feeling of teamwork. But I saw more camaraderie. You sacrifice yourself if someone has a better shot or is in a better position. They weren't as selfish. Red wouldn't tolerate it, you wouldn't play. It was to their best interest to be unselfish. You saw the unselfish play of the Knickerbockers. So there was more ball movement, more teamwork, and more spontaneity on the court. The players would work for him. And he wanted an honest day's work. All these things can be done if, if you have good personnel, and I feel that we have good personnel. Discipline, defense, teamwork. The Knicks' new philosophies were starting to pay dividends, and success was on the horizon. The Knicks had had a great playoff run in 69, so they are now everybody's favorite to win in 1970. And they get off to that incredible start. Hook flight, driving hook, yes! In the fall of 1969, the Knicks went on an 18-game winning streak. Outside three, jumps to 20, yes! Then a league record. And it's intercepted, put in by Dave DeBusher. Number 18 featured a dramatic comeback in Cleveland against the Cincinnati Royals. If this is pulled out, it will be one of the miracles of basketball. He makes it. The Knicks go in front. They throw in. Reed of his touch. It's over. The Knicks win 106 to 105. What a game. Well, it was a special time. What a game. It was a special time for those of us who played on the Knicks. I think it was a special time for those who were fans of the Knicks. Best basketball in the league. You start winning, you start believing in yourself, and you start getting better. They began to realize that they could compete with everybody. They could beat other teams. We were pulverizing teams. You kind of knew this was it for the Knicks. We were rolling. We knew we were a bona fide team. There was an air in this city that had never been seen before. Listen to this crowd now. The New York Knicks became the hottest ticket in town. New York City became alive. Boltzmann's squad started the season 23 and one. The pusher hits from the front. And just kept on winning. Back outside to Bradley. With book deals, commercials, and a host of interesting personalities, the 1969-70 Knicks were the toast of the town. Yet their front man preferred to stay out of the limelight. Red Holtzman was, was one of the most humble and selfless people I've ever known. Red was pathologically Modest. I thought that game was really a sign of a great coach. You spread the word about I that did. kill. He didn't want all that attention on him. I don't know what part your coaching plays in it. Today, there's a, a cult built around certain coaches. That's the opposite of who Red Holtzman was. You just try to do the best job you think you can do at the time. There was no cult of Red, and so inevitably, there became a cult of Red. <laughs> you try to make the moves you think are proper. Sometimes they work out right, sometimes they don't. Red's quiet confidence and no-nonsense approach led the Knicks to a franchise record 60-win season. They just completely took off that year. Out in front, they swing at the bell. Back to Bradley. 18-footer angle right. Yes, Bill Bradley. Finished strong, and, and the rest, of course, was history. Here's the ball game, and the Knicks win. A tremendous victory for the Knicks. Playoff series wins over the Baltimore Bullets and Milwaukee Bucks set up a finals matchup against the Lakers. In Game 7 at the Garden, 
Willis Reed's dramatic one-legged performance. I think we see Willis coming out. Coupled with Walt Frazier's 36 points, 19 assists, and 7 rebounds. They're allowing Walt Frazier to take charge. Led the Knicks to a dominating victory and their first NBA title. Holtzman was named Coach of the Year. Red was hailed as a genius. And I think the guy that was least impressed with all of that was Red. There has never been a greater team than the group that Red Holtzman put on the basketball floor. They were, and I think remain, as selfless as any team ever to play the game. After winning it all in 1970, Knicks coach Red Holtzman was tasked with keeping his eyes on the prize and making adjustments to the roster in hopes of securing a second title. So now Red assumes the dual role of general manager and head coach. And in the years that follow that first championship, it's Red that makes the deal that brings Earl Monroe to New York. Monroe, 50 footer, good. Red, uh, you know, he was just the ultimate guy. Earl the Pearl. Was great coach, uh, great strategist, and he also let the guys play. We had a veteran team, and he let the guys come in and say what it is that was on their mind. Frazier, fake, Monroe, the pusher. But despite the new addition, difficulties arose. It was a Nick team that, that found it harder to advance in the playoffs. In 71, Willis gets hurt. Willis very slow to get up. 1972, they get to the finals. They actually get within three games of a championship, and then the Lakers fulfill their manifest destiny, so to speak, and win a championship. By the 1972-73 season, things look to be breaking right for the Knicks again. Another winter winning streak, this time 11 games, set the team on a course to finish the season with 57 wins. After dispatching the Bullets in round one of the playoffs, the Knicks were set for another classic matchup with the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. After blowing a three to one game lead, now they have to go to Boston and win a game seven. You don't win on road, the seventh game in a place like we were playing in. And they do. You cannot make mistakes against this New York ball club. Farewell, Coach Steve. Red was so animated after the game. He's jumping up and down in the locker room. He's throwing fists. And no one had ever seen Red do that because it, it was beating the Celtics and it was beating Red Arback. There was a real rivalry between those two guys. Having earned the right to again face the Lakers in the NBA Finals. 12 seconds to go. Let's see what Red Holtzman has in store now for New York. Holtzman's Knicks took the title in five games, capping a remarkable four-year run. To Reed Willis, uh, hooked by Bradley, and that's the story. The Knicks were the epitome of team basketball, and Red Holzman was the was a great coach. The New York Knicks have defeated the Los Angeles Lakers. To get those type of personalities and that type of talent together to win two championships, it's amazing. And they race off the court with the 1973 World Championship. Holtzman would remain as head coach for four more seasons, and then returned in 1978 for another four. As the only man to lead the Knicks to the title, he remained a part of the organization for the rest of his life. Red still felt he had a lot to give. He still went to all the games, and he always felt that it was a, a Nick. He would come to the games and sit with Selma. And you could see how happy he was just to be around. When the Knicks go through that incredible run in the 90s, Red Holzman is there and visible for every step of the way. That was a tremendous moral lift to everybody uh, because Red was the guy that showed everybody how to win. Five years after being inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame, Holtzman's number was retired on March 10, 1990, with 613 commemorating the number of coaching victories he had with the Knicks. That's 613 
up there means a lot to me. Red Holtzman died of leukemia on November 13, 1998, but his influence remains in today's NBA through coaches like Phil Jackson, who credit Red as a teacher and a mentor. Red used to say, well, the NBA is a great life. I'd like to thank all my former players for making me such a good coach. It's these games, all these games we had to play. If it wasn't for the games, what a great life it'd be. So that was kind of Red's type of humor. I feel they always gave me an even shake. And when I got a little too big for my pitches, they put me in my place. 1970 and 1973, that great feeling will always be there for all New Yorkers and all NBA fans. And it's a wonderful feeling to have. Red Holzman was the first Nick coach to win a championship. And he is still the only Nick coach to win a championship. I really do want to thank my family, uh, my daughter Gail and my wife Selma. Even if that's all he did, he would have a unique place in the history of the team. But then when you realize that Red was a New Yorker through and through, that he molded a team the likes of which we really haven't seen since then. And through it all, he remained the same guy. He remained Red. Red Holzman, Nick forever. And it's the way that you should say it. He was Red. He was Red. Thank you very, very much. You know.